The exhibit consists of 40 pieces of painting and 40 pieces of handmade ritual cloth textiles. Uh, I would like to express my deep appreciation to the artistic director of the Barons Art Center, uh, Cynthia Knight, and the staff member, Brandon Powell, for their incredible assistance and for their interest in helping us to exhibit this. So we are bringing this to New Jersey to show the residents of New Jersey, to show the richness and vibrancy of the Ukrainian culture. Enjoy. Some 10 years ago, uh, neither me nor my spouse, my wife, Natalie Polenko, knew much about folk art. Uh, we were busy doing our corporate jobs and one summer we decided to go to Ukraine to explore our ancestral land. Uh, we developed a busy itinerary and after three days spent in a gold dome beautiful Kiev, we rented a car and hit the road. Uh, within a couple of days of the trip, we had unfortunate accident. We hit a pothole and so badly damaged our wheel wheel of our car that we needed to go to the local uh, uh, repair shop to fix it. While waiting for the car repair, we noticed two young boys uh, washing cars in that repair shop. And to our shock and dismay, we realized that the uh, cloth that they were using, like rags for wiping water from the cars, were remnants of the unique rushnike, the ritual sacred cloth that we were taught to revere. So that shock was so deep and profound that something triggered inside of our minds and we became really interested in preserving uh, Ukrainian textile. During the same trip, there was another trigger that happened to us. We visited town of Petrikivka, which was for us known for the handcrafted souvenirs. And we bought some souvenirs during that visit, but also discovered for ourselves flat art, Petrikivka Malovki, the beautiful, gorgeous, hand-painted uh, uh, pieces of art. And since then, we started collecting both uh, folk art painting and the folk art textiles. The result of this passion and the result of this collection efforts you can see on this exhibit. Located at the turbulent eastern gates of Europe, uh, Ukraine possesses and preserves the unique and beautiful folk art culture, which is deeply rooted in the local traditions, as well as uh, cross-pollinated with the cultures of the surrounding areas, meaning Eastern Europe, Northeastern Mediterranean, and the Great Steppe, which stretches from Eastern Europe uh, far to the east to China and Mongolia. At the same time, it is also deeply rooted in local traditions, which are <clears throat> basically coming millennia uh, back to the ancient Scythian and Sarmatian cultures of the northern shores of Black Sea. Uh, so having this in mind, we assembled the uh, exhibit, combining the best pieces of the Ukrainian folk art, and which will show the beauty and the exuberance of this culture and this style of art. Basically what we have in the folk art, uh, the uh, artifacts we have, is consist of two types of uh, artwork. One is that's the painting, which originated from <coughs> decorative folk painting in the local houses of the dwellings of the local populations population in Ukraine, and the other one, handcrafted textiles, either hand-woven or hand-woven and then hand-embroidered. At the core of the exhibit, you can see Petrikivka decorative painting art. And uniquely 
and miraculously preserved in one small place of Ukraine. This art represents both history, vibrancy of the culture, and a, I would even say miracle of survival because during the Soviet era, this art was literally slated for destruction because it was not really conforming with the Soviet expectations of their use of art for the propaganda purposes. But even in those dark years, there were some people whose persistence, perseverance, and willingness to take sometimes enormous risk resulted in preservation of this culture. So, the, this painting, this style of painting, combined both the beauty and also some artistic symbolism. And that symbolism dates back far, far to the pre-Christian times, uh, when the major symbol of life, so-called tree of life, or rather see, we, we see it in the art in the form of floral composition or rather even floral bouquet, is always at the center of these paintings. One way or the other, is it just full tree of life or its elements? And some elements of those, you cannot just do it as a tree tree, so you need to build that tree with the elements. And some elements represent different symbols. For example, flowers and berries represent femininity. Then oak tree represents masculinity. Uh, birds, which you often see on these paintings, represent happiness, uh, harmony, and continuity of life. And rooster, which is essential element of many, many paintings in Petrikivka, is actually represents the cyclical rebirth of life, the same way the rooster wakes up uh, every morning, the same as life is renewed every spring. And it went, you know, to the canvas ultimately, to the paper, and we can see that. So originally the decorative painting started the painting on the on the walls of the dwellings uh, which in Ukraine north of Black Sea were always whitewashed with lime. So this whitewash background both in exterior and exterior of the houses represented a fantastic background to put painting in it to which you know, local culture responded brilliantly and, you know, in old dwelling well, and when I was a child, I still remember that it was still in place. You can see fireplaces decorated with flowers and berries. You can see uh, walls decorated with hand painting. And it lasted like that until the probably end of the 19th century when with the redistribution of wealth and the redistribution of labor it became a bit too taxing for many people to do it in every house so there was a, some specialization of labor and some people responded to that but it was also not enough because the demand was so high so one day someone decided to transpose paintings from wall to canvas or paper and these pieces of art they called Malovki, which means literally in Ukrainian painting, were brought to the local market fairs. And it was an instantaneous success. And people who couldn't do the, the wall painting, they brought them into their houses and decorated houses with those paintings. And this is how the formal beginning of this uh, decorative folk art started. It stayed long undetected under the radar screen of the ethnographers and the uh, art community until the prominent Ukrainian historian Mitro Yevornetsky and his associate painter and art researcher Yevhenia Yevenbach uh, decided to do some research. And in central Ukraine, they discovered this discovered in a way discovered for the artistic community, for the, for the ethnography, they discovered this art style and brought it to attention 
of the general audience and brought to the attention of the researchers. Uh, eventually, the artists, the, the artists benefited from that also enormously because they started realizing the importance of their paintings and many of them started getting formal art education. And you can see an older painting, comparing older painting to the new painting, you see a transition from kind of limited sense of proportion uh, and balance, still beautiful, uniquely, naively beautiful, to basically the paintings which have a perfect sense of proportion, perfect sense of balance, and incorporate both the uh, folk art and contemporary uh, artistic canons. Since 1991, a year when Ukrainian independence was re-established, there is a, a serious resurgence and renaissance of the interest in Ukraine to the, uh, their cultural heritage. As people are coming out of the Soviet cultural hibernation and rediscovering their root, so the Petrikivka and other art folk, folk art styles experiencing this type of renaissance. Not only that, the interest of people also significantly ignited the international interest in the Ukrainian art. And in 1993, the exhibit of Petrikivka art was held at the headquarters of UNESCO in Paris. And the UNESCO was so impressed with this art that in December of the same year, 1993, Petrikivka art style well, was designated a status of intangible heritage of humanity. A subset of this exhibit is devoted to another uh, folk art style, also from central Ukraine, which was only recently rediscovered by the group of the uh, artist enthusiasts. It's an art which got a name from the village of Samchike in the Pedilia region of Ukraine. That art combines tradition of Eastern Europe and you may even feel partial that there are some elements, Central European uh, traditions, that you can see that this painting, Samchike painting art style, maybe remind you somewhat about fracture, but you know, and you are not, you're, you're absolutely correct in that because these uh, two different styles actually have, have the same roots, the same origin in Eastern Central Europe. Another type of folk art represented on this exhibit are textiles. And this textile you can see, this uh, sacred ritual cloth of Ukraine they're called Rushnike or Rushnik in singular. Uh, these are ritual clothes which used numerous, numerous occasions of the life of Ukrainian people. Rushnike basically followed people their whole life. From the infant is brought to baptism on Rushnik, the newly wed. Uh, couples are uh, standing on Rushnik and getting their uh, hands binded together by Rushnik in their wedding ceremony. Also on Rushnik, people are brought to their grave when the person deceases. The most common use of uh, Rushnik in the Ukrainian traditions are for wedding ceremony. And because this is probably one of the most joyful events in the human life, these Rushniki are very exuberant, very richly decorated, and they're probably the most frequently met in the collections of the museum and in, you know, in private collections. Uh, we focused on collecting Rushniki from the end of 19th century to the middle of uh, 20th century probably was the peak of the Rushniki making art and exactly at that time with the uh, rising income of the populations the 
uh, maker of Rushniki were using them not only for the ritualistic purposes, but also as an expression of their artistic vision and their artistic taste. And these are probably some of the most beautiful that we ever seen uh, while traveling in Ukraine and collecting these unique artifacts. Uh, similarly to the other parts of the uh, types of folk art, the core motif in Rusnike is the ancient tree of life. This also ancient tree of life takes a bit different take, different turn or take in the ritual clause because quite often tree of life is stylized into the pre-Christian image of uh, mother protector. The woman which has raised this arm to defend her family, to defend her clan, basically to defend life from evil. Uh, Rushniki also contain numerous uh, uh, motifs in the form of the geometric figures. They also have some animalistic motifs, most likely birds, and the most common of these birds is eagle. And eagle also was one of the bridges between the ancient pre-Christian art of making Rushniki and Christianity, because since eagle existed in the mythology of the pre-Christian Ukrainian and was already embroidered on Rushniki, it was easy to transform it into two-headed Trinity eagle, the ancient Byzantine symbol which represents Godfather, Godson, and the Holy Spirit. Usually. Holy Spirit is a crown on top of this two-headed eagle. So that's basically the uh, information about Rushniki. We have two types of Rushniki in this uh, exhibit. We have hand-embroidered Rushniki and we have hand-woven Rushniki. Hand-embroidered Rushniki are more known for its uh, very rich and very exuberant design. And hand-woven Rushniki are more geometric, you know, they, they contain mostly geometric patterns, but both of them, one way or the other, have their own core motif, tree of life. If you would like to see more pieces of Ukrainian folk art paintings, you are very welcome to visit our Facebook page, which is named Petrikivka USA. And this space shows many, many other pieces which are not exhibited here. Uh, thank you so much for your interest in the Ukrainian folk art. Thank you.